Where it's the best. <clears throat> uh -huh, I see us already on the YouTube broadcast. So, good evening, everybody. Good evening to everybody who watches us, who's watching us. And uh, my name is Patrick Kaha, visual and music artist. And uh, <clears throat> I have two great Austrian animators together with me. This is Katrin Steinbacher and Reinhold Bidner. And um, the I, I, I oh, okay. Sorry, there was a delay from the YouTube. Like I said, I'm a sound artist, so it's fine. And um, <clears throat> uh, delay is a great medium of art, always not just for sound. Uh, but just to give a quick overview of why we're here and what's it all about. So <clears throat> I'm uh, in charge for the experimental media program at the new stage. Uh, it's called the New Media Laboratory, the new stage of uh, the oldest Russian theater, which is Alexandrinsky Theater. So um, I'm very happy to collaborate on very many programs with uh, Moscow Board, which is Russian desk of Austrian Cultural Forum. And uh, of course, one of the great initiatives that Austrian Cultural Forums, uh, well, I mean, there's a big uh, number of events that they support uh, over the world. And uh, of course, there's a very famous and very, uh, I think the biggest festival of electronic culture in the world is called Ars Electronica. And uh, on the 20th, on the 21st of October, we at the new stage had sc screening days of uh, creme de la creme of the Ars Electronica program. There are several kind of uh, curatorial projects. I think one is called uh, Electronic Theater, and, uh, and then the other one is called Young Animations, and then uh, Austrian Panorama. And uh, yeah, so uh, thanks uh, to Ars Electronica and to Austrian, Austrian Cultural Forum for, for, for making it happening. Also, the uh, Austrian Cultural Forum is uh, here now with us to support our conversation. And then there was an, an initiative from them to invite artists, uh, some of artists like somebody, uh, to talk and to give an overview about the, the situation and uh, situation with uh, you know, what's happening in the animation on the personal, also on the country, say, institutional level, if you uh, uh yeah in the country so <clears throat> that's why we have um we, we are here uh, together so and uh yeah uh, like we uh, you know our audience like we have some people watching the uh, youtube broadcast that will stay there until the end of the <clears throat> youtube day so um i would just um yeah our subscribers of media lab knows so that we know that we are always like trying to keep it very friendly and relaxed so i would suggest just to, to start our kind of uh, participants of the round table to introduce themselves before we go further. So, Katrin. Okay. <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is already gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, uh, my name is uh, Katrin Steinbacher. I'm a animation director and illustrator, uh, born in Austria, but um, I studied in, in the UK, in London. I studied illustration animation. And yeah, and then I... I stayed there, so I have been living in in London for the last nine years already. Um, but I'm going back and forth um, to Austria a lot, um, especially for festivals like the Two Days Animation Festival, the Diagonale, or Tricky Women Festival. So yeah, so I work as an animation director, but I also teach um, at the University for Creative Arts in in Canterbury. It's like outside of London. So I do a bit of both. Yeah. To add also that Catherine is a, is a, is a large number of awards, national and international, and also nominations of this uh, British Film Institute, I think it's called. The BAFTA. The yeah. BAFTA, BAFTA, yeah. Mm -hmm. a recording in progress. Yeah. That's yeah. A um, gradation film from the Royal College of Art got nominated for BAFTA. Yeah, that was in 2019. Great. So, uh, Rani, what about you? Well, man, yeah, my name is Reinhold Bietner. I'm uh, animate uh, or animation director as well. And I studied originally in Salzburg at Polytechnical University Salzburg Multimedia Art. 
went mm-hmm. to went to Scotland to study there for Erasmus, went to Berlin to finalize my studies there, went to Ars Electronica to the Future Lab to work there in Linz for quite some years. And finally going to Vienna somewhere. But still I have quite a, a, a connection to Salzburg because we have a collective which is called Gold Extra. And so for me, it's kind of this balancing of working together as a collective where we uh, mm-hmm. ex- experiment in various fields, not only animate. I mean, m- me, I'm the person who's bringing animation in there, but we work in sort of documentary games, sort of performances or media performances. And yeah, sometimes I do my own experimental animated films. And I also teach a little bit at Art University in Linz in the field of animation. Yeah. So where are you right now? Uh, right now I'm in Salzburg. Okay, Vienna, so Salzburg, I'm, I'm, London. I'm, okay. I'm, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm switching quite often to Salzburg as well because, I mean, we as a collective, we work quite, uh, how to say, you know, the, the location is not so so important, especially in the last two mm-hmm. years, you know, like we were, uh, you know, like there was many Zoom meetings or, or Slack conversations, etc. So basically we are half-half, we are half Vienna, half Salzburg, uh, but the collective itself was founded in Salzburg. Yeah. So we, yeah, it's already clear now. I think for, for everybody who's watching that we, we we call it Austrian, but in fact, like you know, London also. I mean, I I'm Russian born, but living in, in in Vienna. So, but uh, taking parts in uh, in the Austrian uh, animation and other kinds of music life as uh, as local already, and uh, uh, it's pretty much the same. I because I was working a lot last year with French artists and the rule is like three i think or five years stay there and then you are always a local so uh it's pretty much so in that context i i i don't know if it's a good if this question makes any sense but for me it's, it's really interesting when you say austrian animation i mean just look at us you know what exactly do we mean is it like so it's not about the birth it's really not about the language for my german is really leaves much to be desired so and uh like and also not about the current living space what 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 for example, do you mean, or does it have any meaning when you say is a kind of national uh, aspect enter, or or not? You know, or this is something that comes from the you know past and then still with us. That does it make any? Mm-hmm. Uh, I really wonder. Yeah, that's a very good question. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's a very good question because I mean, I I mean, I studied in 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 the UK, so I have. A lot of the people I'm working with are especially from the UK, so I have a very good network here. And when I, I when I went to the UK, I didn't really know so much about the Austrian animation industry. But that yes, you know all changed when I graduated and when I started sending my film to festivals. And then I was really mm-hmm. surprised that there is actually quite a lot going on in Austria. There are lots of like festivals. Um, you know, Tricky Women um, is a big one and today's animation festival specializes, you know, on animated films. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think for me, what is very important is um, the aspect of, of collaboration. And especially now, it, it's something that is so easy um, to do because as Reini said, everything is pretty much happening online. And um you know, when the whole lockdown happened, we started a, a massive collaboration with loads of artists from all over the world. And we invited them to take part in this like massive, we called it um, flatten the curve um, animation. And a lot of like Austrian artists, not a lot, but a What's couple. What's flatten the curve? Uh, oh, yeah. Bit yeah. The <laughs> Maybe I should explain a little bit. So um, when the whole pandemic started, um, you know, in the beginning, it was very quiet and a lot of artists had a lot of free time and I didn't really know what to do with that time. So we started <laughs> this and everything was quite negative, you know, when it started. So we we wanted to celebrate collaboration and we invited artists to submit um, a short piece of animation where they focus 
on something something positive they have experienced during the pandemic um mm, okay and I've, yeah over 150 artists submitted a film which is really surprising because we ended up working uh, a lot of time on the edit and the sound design and uh quite was quite a big challenge mm all together to make it work because it was so diverse um so i think especially now um the last two years have really shown us that everything is really open and you can collaborate with a lot of different artists and you it doesn't really matter so much where you are um, Mm. because you can connect Mm. um but yeah what what does it mean austrian animation that's a very good question (laughs) Uh, so coming back to your initial question, I mean, I identify as Austrian. I mean, um, I am I'm from South. Mm-hmm. There's a connection. Uh, uh-huh. Hello. 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 Ah, uh, so Kat. Uh, Catherine, can we check your connection again, please? Or is it a problem on my side? Could we check your connection, please? Could you say? Because at least to me, it was, you know, Zoom sound effects. So... Mm-hmm. From my side as well, do you understand me? Yeah, I can hear you super well. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe Catherine reconnects and okay. So while she's uh, in and out, could you elaborate on this kind of allegiance and, you know, attribution of... Yeah. I I think, I don't know, maybe I have two... Maybe I have two answers to this. On on the one hand, I think... uh, Austrian experimental film is very influential for I'm a bit confused about I'm a bit confused about about the sound currently I don't know how's it how's it now maybe better mm-hmm. and Catherine is hello. Back. So, hello <laughs> but maybe she's <laughs> she's only two frames per second right now and not even every second. So, okay. Yeah. So anyway, currently, so maybe maybe I'm trying to answer still and, and not be too confused about the sounds around. Uh, I think animators are experimenting a lot in Austria with totally different yeah. techniques because they are maybe sometimes influenced or by, uh, um, you know, avant-garde film, Austrian avant-garde film, which is quite strong. And I think in Austria, quite a lot is happening uh, on a not totally professional level, you know, like rather on a playful experimental level. And I quite like this a lot. So I have the feeling things grew, you know, the also universities are getting more important mm-hmm. in the sense of teaching animation, you know, there's just not so much tradition in Austria mm-hmm. compared to other countries, compared to Poland or compared to France, etc., or to England as well. But I think, you know, we are getting somewhere and there's a lot of playful, experimental, sometimes abstract, but sometimes also narrative things happen happening. So that's okay. somehow my view of Austrian animation. But on the other hand, I'm I'm totally with Katrin, you know, like it doesn't it's a it's a weird mixture of sometimes identifying with it, but sometimes also not caring about it. Because you know, like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's 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 all getting more and more international. You can also see it in, in music, uh, in in the music scene also in Austria. Maybe this was mm-hmm. more important. 10, 15 years ago, Austrian music or music from Vienna, I have the feeling that younger musicians are collaborating a lot and, you know, like internet and, and, you know, all the networking gave us so many influences from everywhere. 
which of course makes it quite interesting. But sometimes, but you know, at the end, you're still, you cannot hide your roots totally, you know, or you should. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, nobody's, I mean, yeah, well, cool. Katrin is with us, I think. <laughs> Hello. Yes, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Great. Come again. <laughs> I, the sound I, is still super punky. I still have, I don't know, it, it, it's very, you know, like the. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. But that's, you know, uh, but that's surprising. I mean, there are a lot of uh, animations, I think, in, at least in this year, the Ars Electronica problem, problem really reflecting this connection connection loss, you know, bugs in the connection. And I really like, I mean, no surprise because it's our reality, especially the Corona days, but it's even written in the description that uh, I don't remember the exact uh, phrase, but of course, I mean, you can just watch it. It's pretty many, like a lot of people are uh, working and using this bug as a feature, you know, also because it's a, it's an everyday thing that you were talking and that we are even like now in the, the, online and it happens, you know, and that I, I, it's very nice to see the, the program of the animation that it becomes a creative mm -hmm. tool as well, you know. To me, mm -hmm. it's something like, you I know, mean, the, the noise of the vinyl, you know, that was a very irritating for probably people back then, but now people add it deliberately to their recordings to, to give a feeling that yeah. that's a vinyl. Mm -hmm. and that's I mean, a thing, you know. I can imagine that maybe the Ars Electronica program is rather on the 3D computer animation side. I mean, not 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 necessarily and not everything, but they, you know, like what what in Austria, I guess there's more happening than only, of course, computer animation. You know, like there's there's a lot of, you know, everything is happening from computer animation, but also to very narrative hand drawn animation, to yeah, yeah, sure. to you know, like people who experiment with film with 16 millimeter eight millimeter film etc etc as well yeah yeah Catherine, mm. can we check are you really with us now i think it's also, it's also Catherine is very animated today yes stop motion animation absolutely yeah well it, it's uh, weird it's weird because before it worked, but let's see. Hopefully, it yeah. comes back. Well, I mean, hopefully, what's it called? The law? You know, I forgot. Anyway, uh, but this was another. By, by the way, you just touched a, a very, uh, very important issue because uh, you said that uh, there is a computer animation and there is, the, you know, whatever animation. Because somehow, in the last years, what I witnessed, what we witnessed, that there is a huge interest from the festivals and from the juries and from the programmers to something like brand new you know so VR, ARs and it's like a search for like what is cooler what is the up-to-date what is modern and then recently when we were planning this program a colleague of mine uh Selena for uh, from the theaters in a way she, like, partly it was for attitude as well but then she I was also kind of touched when she's when she said that uh yeah but what about the good old animation where where did it gone you know so where what what happens what's wrong with it so why don't we really pay enough attention to just like what what's you know and and actually I, I as an author i realized it on my own skin you know that uh yeah it happened like about five or four or three years ago so it's, it was not kind of taken by by the face of something like really cutting edge and once it's not a cutting edge it's not cool anymore so give us something super modern or just you know stay where you are which is also fine mm -hmm. but what do you think about that because also i mean you were a part of this future lab you know future yeah what i think of the future <laughs> was, that, no. was that the question no 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 that would be the next question what do you think about <laughs> this tendency to look for the future uh where is the kind of old school stuff are kind of starting looking not so uh, kind of yeah yeah i mean what i what i had to think before yeah, yeah. What yeah. I had to think before when I was still thinking about Austrian animation, um, mm -hmm. there was, uh, you know, every year um, Anima Fest Zagreb is happening. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, there was a screening of Austrian animated films at Anima Fest Zagreb. 
uh, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, because yeah. because uh, the the festival director Daniel Sulic has a has also a, an Austrian background, sort of. I think he was studying there, or so yeah. Okay. And mm-hmm. and uh, you know, there was the screening of the program, and uh, there was not many people anyway but mm-hmm. afterwards there was a q and a with the filmmakers who were there and i was also there and one funny mm-hmm. response was for example i have never seen a program like this <laughs> so because it was so diverse and so experimental and sometimes also radical etc cetera, etc cetera. so mm-hmm. this uh, i just had to think of this and this was quite funny because it was really diverse it was mm-hmm. not necessarily mm-hmm. only top notch technical it was not necessarily only abstract experimental. It was everything somehow. And this makes it nice to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Catherine is back. Catherine, we yeah. discuss, we've been discussing this issue. Yeah, you know, because that most of the times, yeah, I don't know if you encountered this, but I guess you d- definitely did that. It's like, you know, taken for, uh, how shall I say, you know, this top notch stuff. Like you are cool because you are, if and only if you are working with the, Top end technology, you know, what's what's the most topical on the market, which is like you know VR, AR, and you know what the uh-huh. controller and you know programming and coding and stuff, and it's kind of old, good old animation is kind of not so cool any longer. Whereas, of course, like I mean, even like ten years ago, it was the, like computer animation was, you know, um, uh-huh. like a someone in a way, but not anymore. And I mean, I just love my, I mean, I, I appreciate it. And we'll call actually the, the, the program that we run the new media laboratory. So in St. Petersburg, so we research a lot and we teach, you know, and we experiment okay. a lot of VR, AR and whatever, but, but still, you know, my personal heart is just, you know, with the, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy, like, you know, something that I was doing before I had a computer, you know, drawing and then uh-huh. stop motion. Now I have a computer and after effects and I'm super, super, super happy that for me, it's a big progress, but I don't need to apply with a scenario to the state or business studio, getting it approved and just paying to the, or looking for money for the, you know, bunch of professions that I don't need because I can do it myself, you know, and I think it's a great progress that I'm really happy to enjoy, you know. Huh? So what, what's, and actually you are very, also very, very much into the illustration. So it's a, the kind of good old technique. So how do you feel this disposition of forces in this animation world? Nowadays, uh-huh. you know, look at yeah. Uh, uh, I guess I find this way, versus... yeah, um, yeah. I know what you mean. I mean, I find this way of thinking personally a bit restrictive because I'm really into you know hybrid animation and I'm like really enjoying to try out new things, which also involves VR. I mean, VR, for instance, is something I I, I tried um, a couple of weeks ago and I'm trying to learn it. I think it's always good to know how to use it. But I also think uh, for me personally, it needs to make sense for the film I'm making. Um, so would that make sense, you know, because at the end of the day, like it is a tool, but would it make sense for the message of your film? Um, because that's, mm-hmm. um, I, I'm enjoying that more conceptual side of it uh, quite a lot and thinking about the idea and what I'm trying to say with my film, what I'm trying to tell, like what story am I trying to tell? And would a VR experience, for instance, an installation, you know, make sense for this film? Mm. And if it <clears throat> then I'm, then I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not doing it. Um, so I think it's good, you know, that you are aware of all the technologies and techniques um, available. <clears throat> um, but mm-hmm. Also, can be quite overwhelming and at the same time quite restrictive. Um, so yeah, for me, the idea always comes first, and then I decide on on the material. And I'm not really so worried about, you know, okay, is this something? Is is this cool to make? You know, is this trendy? I think that really stops you from you know pushing the boundaries um and i personally would feel a bit yeah restricted um so Mm -hmm. yeah i think yeah i'd worry so much about it if it's you know very something that is very good in terms of you know the technique and and new technology so yeah that does that make sense Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh-huh. definitely, and it'll be some something much newer. But I mean, it's, yeah, sure. And uh, but I mean, before you disappear, well, I wanted to, Rainy, so yeah. No, I I just wanted to say I'm totally with Katrin, and uh-huh. I I think that's what I really enjoy also about you know animation festivals that they 
you know that it that it's not about oh, technology and and not about you know of course every festival also tries now to show VR etc. But at the end, I think what people enjoy most is, is mm -hmm. you know the, the the screening of films they enjoy or that have a meaning to them, yeah. and you know especially it you know most of the animation festivals at least from my point of view it's rather the hand drawn animations that are being well received or selected it's it's not a lot of festivals who show many 3d animated films for example you know speaking about techniques and and i think this this has a the reason behind it it's you know like a hand drawn thing more comes from the creator than uh, 3D uh -huh. animate, a 3D animated thing. Yeah. But, mm. but ne <clears throat> nevertheless, as a last sentence, you know, it's totally important and interesting to experiment in these fields like virtual reality. But at the end, you always have to have the plan to, you know, or to only do it if it makes sense for your project. Yeah. And of course it yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean um something quite i had a quite an interesting discussion with um an experienced designer the other week he his name is felix scholde he he studied experience design at dsa and he works a lot of a lot with immersive technology such as uh, vr for instance and and he said as well because he's very interested in like creating installation and experiences especially for museums and he said you know you need to ask yourself the question would does it make sense for this project? So for instance, why would I go to a museum and um, you know, put on a VR headset to see something if I can also experience it in my own home, in my house? So you know, the next question would be then, so why, 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 what can I do? What can I bring to this museum experience with this VR headset that I can't experience in my own home? So, mm -hmm seeing it like as, as a whole you know he's also thinking about um the installation in itself and he's thinking about things like how can the the viewer or the, the person who is experiencing or putting on the vr headset become um almost like an actor um in this museum space you know so that other people can then watch this person because he built this massive wall where um, it, it becomes like a shadow play, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I think it's always an important question to ask. And I think it's something you have to ask yourself as well. That would that make sense? Does it make sense? Um, and I personally, because um, I, like a lot of my films focus a lot of like the human experience, subjective experience, human emotions. And I think hand-drawn animation is sometimes a bit more appropriate and helps me to communicate these rough emotions and feelings a bit better than, you know, very sleek digital animation, if that makes sense. So yeah, it really depends on, on, on the film and the, and the topic. But I also think that these kind of things, there, are, there is a lot of like opportunity and it's full of, of possibilities and potential. But yeah, I think it, it's great. And I really enjoy trying out new technologies, but also for me it needs to make sense for the film yeah sure or for the project I mean, so, some... so for for example uh, our collective we called extra we got a small research grant to put some of our projects into vr you know we, we created some sort of documentary games mm -hmm. and you know our ex cool. our ex our expectations were basically quite wrong you know like we thought about okay wow this particular project is going to be great in vr mm -hmm. you know this project for example was basically about war and about conflict and we thought okay if you put this into vr it will be even more diverse immersive, uh, like immersive yeah. et cetera, et cetera. so we put it in there but we had the feeling it just does not work you know it, it, you know because of the uh, there's this fascination about VR. Wow, you're in the space now. And it's somehow, at the end, it was too playful, you know, like to, uh, how, I don't know. Our, our project was not meant that people have fun in the first three minutes being in there, you know, in, in this experience. It was meant to absorb you with a topic that is, well, that has a meaning to us and uh, 
in VR, it seemed like it, we, we don't get it across. Yeah. So it's yeah. quite interesting. And, and that's where we learned you really have to, you know, you can, of course, always experiment. But if you really believe you, you want to make a bigger VR project, you should be really um, certain of the, yeah, you, sh you should be, you should know that it works in VR. So uh -huh. test it out before, before you, you know, start working for years on it. <laughs> or think, sure. really I mean, think my, about it before. My own, my own connection, uh, like, I mean, I also had several touches and there are several projects that I, what I was trying and, you know, more or less or not successfully at all the VR. I don't know, we just, we seem really having to say a lot about <clears throat> VR, but okay, then that's my contribution. So in the, in the University for Applied Arts, uh, several years ago in the class of Martin Kush was very much for the full dome, you know, stuff. I was uh, doing a couple of, pro yeah, there. And actually one was also shown in, uh, I think last year or year before the Arts Electronica as well. And I got to really, really, really love the full dome. It's an incredible environment, like it's an environment and I really feel it uh, myself like uh, it's, it's, it's on the way, in a way it's kind of, it's an extent for to me, it comes from, very naturally from the flat screen, something we always do, you know, it's a screen, but it's just like kind of twisted and that it mm. makes a surface around you. So nothing mm -hmm. really virtual, you don't put any technology on yourself. It's really, you know, eyes, objects, but it's just around, and it surrounds you super very much. So I, I got to love it and I, I made a work that really works not so very much with the uh, subject or, or the, you know, this kind of narration meaning, but with this sensation of, you know, challenging the gravity, I would say, you know, how fast is the movement and how, how, what are the changes in the movements of the elements that people sometimes feel very, you know, the challenge in the, the physicality of a viewer who is there. But of course, to work with that, you need an access to the full dome, which I, of course, had like from once, once in a while, from time to time, but not enough, you know, in order to really render and try if it works. Then I took the VR goggles and I built a model of the full dome in the, in the, in the VR. And then I could work at home actually with my computer and then imagine that I'm, I'm in the dome. So as an intermediary technology, it was very cool, something I discovered. So that was probably my best experience with the VR, that it was uh, technology in between, you know? So not the, on the final uh, kind uh -huh. of the uh, final point of the pro project presentation, but there's a technology in between and I found it super cool in that sense. But that was my contribution. Just yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, there is a lot of, I think, uh, yeah, a lot of possibilities and potential, especially now, you know, now that there is discussion about you know, creating digital spaces and it, it's very, you know, sustainable. It's like sustainability is a big aspect um, when it comes, you know, to VR, especially in architecture. Like, should we really build physical, like in, in the physical space, should we really build, some, build something or should we instead focus more on building stuff mm -hmm. you know, digitally? I think it's quite interesting um, to think about it. And I'm, yeah, looking forward to where this like technology leads us. Yeah. So, okay, guys. I, yeah. <laughs> I I don't know. Shall we? Shall, uh, I'm not sure if we still should talk about VR or so. But you know what? What just came to my mind right now. You know, we were also talking with our collective about VR. We had the feeling somehow that the timing for it is not the best one. You know, because uh -huh. because VR is something. You know, experimenting on yourself with it is really nice. But you know, to show something in a museum or so is most of the time something rather lonely. And you know, like we were sometimes in the last year, two years, sometimes locked up and singular at home. So we had the feeling it doesn't make sense right now to to show something where you are where you are excluded from everything around you, but rather try to show something that is more collaborative. You know, mm -hmm. to my mind, maybe sometimes sure. if, uh, a, a, a paper card game or whatever is maybe nice. more the more a good timing for now than a VR installation. Mm -hmm. But VR can also help us to connect, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. sure, sure. Connect to your connectivity. I mean, that's not so much, mm. you know, 
within animation, but also like when you think about having meetings, um, you know, you can build like online meetings where you have your own yeah. avatar and you that basically looks like you and you can express emotions and stuff, especially now with Zoom that every, everybody on is in, in Zoom meetings then everybody is like turning off their cameras and then you have to ask people can you like turn it back on again so i can see your face um especially you know with teaching and, and meetings in companies so i think it's yeah there's also the possibility of connectivity but i totally yeah agree with with what you're talking about especially like in museum settings it's it is a bit lonely and also a bit strange if you think about it you know you put on a vr headset and you know, you, you don't really know what is happening around you anymore. You know, are people like looking at you? Um, are they observing you? Why? Because it's also this, this odd thing when you're like um, having, when you have the headset on and you're moving your hands slightly strange and, you know, it's, 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 it can be quite a, a weird feeling if you, mm. you know, mm. that's it, especially in public spaces. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. But I think this is, a, you know, something special about VR because it's, a, you know, it's kind of common denominator for nearly all the talks I have about that everybody's kind of, you know, the range of emotions and, the, you know, attitude to it is between I hate it to, okay, I mean, it's fine, but I'm not so sure about, but yet everybody's talking about it like we are right. doing right now, you know, and this is very funny. Um, but, but at the end, well, yeah, one, last, one last sentence from my side know. about VR. At the end, I would be totally happy if, you know, especially traditional animators experiment in VR, because uh, I think there should be people who destroy the usual styles that you see. I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. the total expert now, but usually or quite often, I guess, in VR, it's about, you know, technology and perfection, etc. I I imagine I, I'm not an expert currently, okay. but I think I had most fun with VR when it was projects that were you know just yeah also rather like drawn style or somehow you know not perfect but rather who destroy it somehow so this would be nice if if more traditional animators uh -huh. go into this field and yeah as i said destroy it yeah and <laughs> try did you try drawing with a vr headset because there's uh, oh, it's, yeah it's yeah quite yeah, yeah. I don't remember, you know, there's a, there's a certain, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite interesting, yeah, yeah. I think the app is called Tool, something with, I, I can't remember the name now, but I was actually trying it the other week, yeah. yeah. So you can say to your, like, you know, traditional, um, to, and into VR as well, yeah, it's quite fun. <laughs> so, okay, I mean, if we feel like we're done here with VR... <laughs> We can switch to augmented, no, joking. Let's switch to the presentation because uh, Ryan uh, pre uh, prepared a nice presentation about the overview of the kind of sort of uh, kind of infrastructure of uh, the festival life uh, of Austrian animation, right? Can we look there, please? I mean, shall I, shall I shortly switch into this? Not, not showing my stuff, but rather showing maybe, I mean, what I thought about it before, what, because it, it fits quite well. Um, wait a second, where's the, the, there is it, I think. I hope you, is it full screen now? Yeah. Perfectly full. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I, what I thought before, what I wanted to show, this is a project by us, you know, okay. speaking of Linz and speaking of Ars Electronica, um, you know, there's of course also this uh, interest in, you know, mm. experimenting with technology. And, you know, when I was living mm -hmm. there and, and me and a friend, we met and, you know, we were a little mm -hmm. bit pissed off. We were pissed off about this, about, you know, you know, always technology first and then the story second, sort of, or the, the concept second. I mean, I'm over exaggerating now, but we sometimes had the feeling that projects are like this. And then we decided, you know, my, my colleague is called Christian Korher we had the idea to make a flipbook festival in Linz. Uh -huh. Just because, you know, just to do something which is not about perfection and not about, you know, like, uh, you know, like just something small that can be magic. So we, we made the first, I think, I guess, Austrian flipbook festival. And this was so much fun, you know, like, and you could really see then it's not about, 
not necessarily about technology, but rather about, you know, like just creating something that has a meaning to you and, you know, like showing it and, and you know, like flip books are still magically and maybe they're getting more and more because everything is getting more smart and technologic. And so, so we were totally surprised how, how good this worked and how much fun people had and how interactive it was at the end, you know, like, mm -hmm. because Linz was, of course, always, a, you know, many discussions about interactivity. And we had the feeling, hey, this is totally interactive. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Still about this technologic part. And maybe what I, st what I also show is, because it gives an Austrian context, you know, like some of the, you know, as, as, as we said before, there's a, yeah, there's a lot happening. And, and to my mind, it's very diverse what is happening, you know, like this people who come from the performance side like Paul Wenninger yeah, the, the, sorry the pictures are now of course very small but you know this is this is a slide that I sometimes show to students to show the diversity that is happening in Austria or you know like also people who are connected to games and very illustrative games etc or very very abstract experimental like this is Rainer Kohlberger or I guess some of you saw this film, Don't Know What, from Thomas Reynolds. Uh, ah, some people are... Uh, this is, I guess this is how we know each other. Yeah, so sorry, interrupting. Uh, this is how we all know each other through these festivals. One of yeah. them is uh, Best Austrian Animation. And second is the Under the Radar. And I think you you have it here somewhere in the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And could you... Because Katrin was even in the jury there, in the, the two days animation. So could you elaborate yeah. on that? Or like yeah. how it goes with the... Festival so, life. Yeah. So uh, maybe this is interesting for some of the people here who are listening, who are maybe listening. Um, the Thomas Reinoldner, who was who is this person here? He established the two days animation festival and best Austrian animation con in connection in collaboration with other people, of course. And you know. Since last year, there's this quite nice uh, Best Austrian Animation <clears throat> database, which gives you an insight into Austrian uh, Quite a filmmakers. lot, yeah. So we could, we could really, I think that's a good point, yeah, that we could recommend it because it's quite a lot to, and for to, very many years. To, to my mind, yes, yeah. I think there's a lot happening. And of course, me as well, I don't know. Of course, also, you know, new people are coming every year so maybe i'm not connected to the scene anymore to the <laughs> fresh scene of austrian animation and yeah are this, you guys this taking is... part in this, in this year of uh, this today's austrian animation i mean i submitted something but as i did not get any response yet so but you know i was quite often part of it so it, it's yeah it's a it's a fantastic festival so and it's uh if this year I'm not selected. This is, of course, totally fine as well because you know there's so many good things happening and and new people showing up and coming up. So mm. totally, totally fine with everything. Mm. Catherine, so you maybe you want to give some <laughs> some dark insights of the festival as a former jury member. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, uh, Thomas uh, Reynolds now is, I mean, is doing a fantastic job. I mean, that's, it's great that this database exists. And, and for me, you know, when I uh, started submitting my films or my film for the, for the very first time, that was the first thing that popped up on Film Freeway. And I think what, what he said as well is because there are a lot of like Austrian animators who are not based in Austria, but they, who are living in, you know, abroad. And they are also trying to target, um, you know, the people living in, in different mm -hmm. countries. Um, and like with Film Freeway, you know, it's quite easy to find out about new festivals. So this is basically years ago, that's how I found out about um, that festival. And, and this is when I started learning about the, the Austrian industry. <laughs> it's really, you know, has a really positive. I had a really positive. I was really excited to find out there is actually a lot going on, and it is very diverse. 
um, with Under the Radar to this animation festival and, you know, Waltraud and Birgit doing a fantastic job as well with Tricky Women Festival because it's very well known, not only in Austria, but also like internationally. Um, so, yeah, that is very, I'm very excited about this and there is, yeah, quite a lot happening. I don't know, um, Reini, you, because you started, you studied in, 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 in Salzburg, right? Yeah. So multimedia art. So you you can specialize. I think I, I remember in 3D animation, right? Uh, you know, it's it's already quite some time ago, but back yeah. then it was, and it, it still is like this. 3D animation is always a topic or yeah. or, or a, a a class sort of there, and I think it still is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because in terms of the education. There, there are a couple of things happening in Austria, right? I mean, you can study, I think it's called painting at the Applied University for Applied yeah. um, Arts, but you can also specialize in animation. Yeah. So, yeah, there is yeah quite a bit happening. I mean, nothing compared, obviously, to different countries where you can, like, it's, it's not, you know, in Hungary, in Budapest, it's very well known for animation, and also, you know, France, obviously, it's not the same, but I, I feel like animation is becoming more and more uh, accessible, um, not only because you can study it, but also because you can, any, anybody can do it. You know, you can do it from your home. Uh, you just, you know, download the software, so you start drawing and you scan it in, so everybody can start um, experimenting with animation. So, yeah, sorry, I got really distracted now. So what was, <laughs> sorry, what was your initial question? What are my insights? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think it's, I, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't know, I mean, of course, it's cool to have a, you know, good ac academy or something that, you know, you can yeah. go and get, your, but for me, somehow, it, you know, it smells a little bit very, very often with more of the kind of social kind of connectivity and aspect that you, you know, you show your diploma and it's written that's your professor and that's your degree, which yeah. is, I think, I mean, if you look, Austria is still a great example of that you can study this, but even if you look at many other countries where it is, or even in like in my hometown where I was born in, in Russia, so it was nothing close to kind of going and choosing, you know, I study animation or I study uh, quantum physics or experimental music, nothing like that. So, and then, if you look at the situation in the world, of course, it's very, yeah, it's very far from, from anything like a balance, you know. So, of course, some people train because they can, because it's around the corner, you know. And some people, uh, but they, they just don't have this money or this awareness of where to go and actually probably takes time to just you know get there but but the cool stuff for me in that is what Katrin just mentioned that it's accessible you know and it's also very stable the technology even now like the computer technologies music or video is very stable very powerful even compared to 10 or 20 years ago you know I still remember how they were called in Moscow then the USB uh, format and was introduced and was like wow it's a big you know advantage plug and play uh -huh. everybody was calling it and we we and because it never really worked so we changed it we altered that to plug and pray you know so and you know comparing to those even days like now it's just paradise uh, because now it's really plug and play and then it's very fast you know and then you don't need to to wait for weeks for just one second render so uh, -huh. uh and and it really opens up a lot of kind of opportunities for basically everybody who wants to try and then it's like you can really learn very much by watching stuff on the youtube and then by trying more you know being very curious and you know this is a i always give i always like speaking of the education you know i always bring this example because you know we all take parts in uh in part in all this where we see you know a lot of very smart and very academic conferences with the professors uh -huh. from you know whatever is talking very serious things you know and then there is this guy who my i used to love him very very much now i mean just more of a kind of my history of music upbringing steve Vai is a golden guitar playing like crazy you know uh at the same time i mean something you wouldn't probably call like arty arty even though she's a student of friends up and you know she belongs to these circles but but he really achieved a lot, you know. And then I, I recently I watched one of his artists, and the guy is like, he's doing, you know, what he really loves. And he achieved like everything, mm -hmm. you know, the crowds and the money. And, and then he was asked, like, how are you do? How 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 did you learn? And how do you still? Yeah, are you still learning? And how do you, you know, get from you know, 
step to step in your career. And I was really fascinated about it. I'm just reacting on this education, you know, what mm-hmm. we have mentioned. That this, this guy has no shame to say, well, I'm just doing it like a kid, you know. So the same mechanism, like kid is trying something. And we have this uh, kind of inherited like, genetic more or less mechanism that we try. And if it, if it works, then we have the confirmation, the mm-hmm. neurologic confirmation. That it, and we try it again, and then we try something next, and then, and then we have again this confirmation, and this is how it goes. And I mean, I was like, wow, that, that's the best answer, you know, for, for the, actually for the education uh, system, I think. And especially now we have these tools in, literally in our hands, you know, it's the same computer that I use now for talking with you guys. So it's just, you know, and then I go and switch to applications and programs or my scanner or my, you know, printing devices and just, you try, you get the confirmation, you go on. You know, I think it's wonderful. Honestly. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. I think there should definitely be space and time for, you know, testing your ideas and and really trying it, you know, doing, a I don't know, a prototype and trying out different materials and, and methods to see if it works. And I mean, that's, that's yeah. probably the, the most fun part is it to really test out new things because would you – you know, you you want to put you want to push the boundaries as well, and you want to try new things. Otherwise, it can easily get very boring as well if you keep doing the same thing. So I think, yeah, you should definitely leave some space for also making mistakes. And and as as Heine said, for instance, he tried. You need to try it. You know, if you try VR and then if it, you if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But this is how you yeah. also learn and grow and also have probably have the most fun because it, it can you know you can get bored as well easily because you as as an as a practitioner you find your voice and you find your way of doing things and you know it works um but oftentimes you know then it can get boring quite easily so yeah it's always good to mm-hmm. test think a bit more like yeah, yeah, sure. try it and see if it works or not Okay, so Maybe. that was a little bit about the education. Or oh, Yorani, you want to add something to the no, kind of tries? I somehow, I somehow try to get back a little bit more to to festivals because mm-hmm. yeah, I, th- I, I wanted to, also to ask about the festivals. Yeah. To some extent, I also got somehow ed- educated by some of those festivals. I think because you you meet the other people, you and you know, besides Austria, which has nice festivals, but also others which are not necessarily animation festivals, but which also get more and more interest in animation. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know, for example, Crossing Europe Festival in Linz or Diagonale in, 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 in Styria in Graz or, uh, you know, there's others. Or, you know, if we're talking about Ars Electronica here, uh, this expanded animation symposium, which is, of course, more a symposium, but they also have screenings, etc. So I think there's a lot to learn in all these events. And what I wanted to add going a little bit away of Austria, you know, we are, we can be so lucky, we are so lucky that we are in Europe or in mid-Europe because mm-hmm. in all those countries around, there's also, exi- you know, really nice animation festivals or events happening, you know, like no matter if it's Croatia or Slovenia or Hungary or Czech Republic or, or Switzerland, you know, all our neighboring countries, mm-hmm. you know, like you, you, you can, you can, learn a lot there and uh you yeah of course it's not it's not so it 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 can become expensive if you if you travel there on with your own money etc but you know i was sometimes lucky to be invited and i always learned a lot by meeting other new people who are also in this field originally i didn't even feel i belong to this field but somehow it happens you know like Mm -hmm. Originally, I always thought, no, I'm not an animator. I'm not an animator. But then I got more and more interested in working on on projects that are somehow connected to it, to animation. And uh-huh. suddenly I had the feeling, hey, I belong already a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, and so on. So this, yeah, there you this learn, actually... there you yeah. learn more than sometimes in university, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's really cool. Uh, uh, or Catherine, do you want to add something to that? Because I actually wanted to, because it's cool that we switched a little bit now to this topic of the, of the you know, the role of the festivals. And Rani just mentioned one of them. So it's also a little bit like kind of educational in a way. Yeah. 
yeah it is definitely i mean it's i think it's always great to be able to go to festivals you know as i said sometimes you get an invitation and there's also some funding you know um you can apply for funding um there's also in, in the uk the possibility if you get into like bigger festivals they pay for you for you going there and i always found it you know very um you know beneficial for me to go because I met you know so many people who are um, doing completely different uh, also animation obviously or not always animation sometimes you know the live action filmmakers but uh, yeah it's so interesting to hear and also to build a community because I think especially with animation it can be very lonely um, because you work <laughs> film in you know in, in your dark room and you uh, are not yeah. speaking to people, uh, a lot for a long time uh, so yeah, yeah um, it's always great to go to festival and meet new people and um, and and then you go uh, to do and then you keep meeting the same people again and I think building a community and, and talking to other people about their experience, learning mm -hmm. funding, learning about festivals from other people, learning about you know filmmaking from other people is yeah it's always great yeah and I can definitely recommend i was i always love going to to film festivals so i mean it has been a bit difficult in the last um two years for obvious <laughs> but um so fingers crossed it's it's hopefully gonna be easier now again to go to festivals yeah yeah totally then i want to also kind of pinpoint another uh, important aspect of the festivals is that it's like something that you guys had just right now. So because you are in the pool of Arts Electronica, so they are in charge of, in a way, of your film's distribution. So yeah, just a you, you had your screenings just right now in, in Russia, and I guess it happens to, to everybody who is there in the kind of in the selected um, uh, pool. So I think this, like, it's a cool stuff, you know. Yeah, so that's it's a kind of producers, right? It's a kind of producer's job in a way to you know deliver art mm -hmm. art of these artists to that places, and then you know. So it's not. I mean, of course, the thing is that the reality is completely different right now. If you look back at the times when festivals, when festivals originated, you know. So mm -hmm. I think it's really. I'm always thinking about that. Uh, well, basically, what was the choice in the like 50s, 60s, 70s for 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 experimental animators, filmmakers? Like, if you are not on the TV and you are not because you're experimental, so if you are not in the film theaters, which you also know, then then you are nowhere actually. So, and then the fe uh, like festivals was uh, was the was the answer, yeah, and it was yeah. very cool actually. It was the only uh, kind of door for for like a communication channel between you. And the audience yeah of course now it's not you know so there's youtube everybody's well but i think uh that's still cool about the festivals you know that they uh, do this job you know so they at least select some something somebody of whom they like uh -huh. and then they uh, promote this so I, it's a curatorial kind of organized distribution and uh -huh. that's the way i see it you know? uh -huh. I mean, from from my side, I think uh, distribution for you know an upcoming animator so is is quite a a tough thing, and then you know it's quite difficult to get to know the experience where uh -huh. to submit. I mean, f speaking from the Austrian side, I think there's many sort of you know there's not so many productions where there's a producer then who submits your film. You know, it's rather like you are you are sort of sometimes responsible for everything you are the filmmaker you're the yeah, animator i know i never had I mean, any or, producer for my animation so i was really always the author really really and small it's a huge job. yeah Very really annoying. basically and you know if you start submitting films i think it's quite tough to get in there in, into the whole system mm. um yeah especially yeah especially talking about things like film freeway uh you also have to select you you have to have the experience where to where to submit because I think there's also quite sort of bad festivals emerging or sort of pseudo festivals which are maybe not happening at all or something like that. Um, maybe this yeah, was yeah. now maybe this was now a bit over exaggerating, but I have the feeling it's no just... no I totally agree with you. I okay, stopped okay. actually. I stopped. 
no. by myself. I was very fascinated, but then in a year or two, I really for me it was uh, something is for for me it was really like learning step by step. You know, like okay, there's this festival. Uh huh. Okay, I send in there, and the next year yeah. I get to know new ones, and then you get to know filmmakers. Hey, would you ask? Hey, can you can you send me your list of festivals where where you submit and so on? So it was slightly getting more and. Uh -huh. But you know, like uh, it's it's uh, currently, for example, I you know I would have a film that I should submit, but you know sometimes the deadlines are being forgotten or lost in my, my in my head because you know it, you cannot every day do everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sure. So so the coolest thing would be somebody who's doing this for you, but this either costs money or you know you're being selected hopefully or not etc yeah 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 it's very time consuming i mean it's a self to submit to festivals and i mean there is a list i don't know uh, Reine, if there's that is a thing in in austria so but there's a list an a the a list festival and the b list festival list for animation yeah yeah um, That's a good starting point, but also, you know, a lot of good festivals are not on this list. But as a as a starting point, I mean, that's not yeah. something you learn when you study animation. It's you have to yeah. figure out, and that's why it's so so good to have a community and to know other filmmakers because then you can ask, you know, how as you said, can you send me your list of <laughs> um, yeah, that's as as a starting point. Yeah, that's yeah. that's cool. I mean, there's six pack film. You can submit your film to six pack film in in Austria. Yeah, and they also on their website have some sort of festival list. You know, this yeah. can also be a a starting point, and so, and, but I, you know, at the end, of course, they have to select as well. You know, they they cannot take every film, and you know, for example, if you're a narrative animated film creator. I would say your chances are not always there to get selected at six pack uh -huh. because you know that, that, you know, this is not now meant in a bad way. You know, they just basically have a different focus. Of uh -huh. course it can happen. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe some of your films are in there, but it can uh -huh. happen that you have quite a nice animated narrative film and they basically cannot select it because it's not their, you know, they're not their focus. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but of course so, they, 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 now one last sentence about this, but of course they also select animated films and it can be a, also quite a nice starting point. So one of my first animated experiments was selected there and I was totally happy, you know, like, you know, then I got to know some festivals as well. I didn't even go there because, because I thought, ah, oh, it's not my world, but you know, I suddenly, aha, <laughs> uh -huh, my. My film is being shown in Romania at Animest Festival or whatever. So it, this was nice that somebody mm -hmm. did this for you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, because six pack film is because six pack film is being, I guess, funded. You know, they they don't charge money. They 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 put you in the list and then they try to support you. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but. That's another thing because a lot in this list you mentioned whether you found it on the uh, aggregator or you exchange with friends and colleagues, but still, you know, a lot of them are paid. And on the A, like a lot of A festivals, like the top festivals, you have to pay. And of course, if, as an artist, I mean, uh -huh. on top of your job that you, you know, fill all the forms and send all the papers, you pay. And then if you pay to 10 of these festivals, you're out of your money. And so you go live on the street. You know, uh -huh. so it's not an option, obviously. So there should be something like, you know, Yeah, uh, and one last thing I want to say is that, you know, there was a time where filmmakers didn't uh, publish their films on, on Vimeo for a long time because they were waiting because of the festivals. But I think there is a change, and I think not mm -hmm. so many care so much about it anymore. And also festivals don't really care about it so much anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of, you know, my colleagues, um, they publish it to Vimeo straight away because they just reach um a lot of people uh, because with festivals it is very niche you know people mm. who go 
interested in animation as uh, so you don't really reach a lot of people outside of this world which is you know sometimes I feel a bit of a shame I'm like oh I'm seeing like all these amazing films but the audience you know they're all filmmakers so you don't really reach um, so many people outside of this world so I think there is a great possibility of you know submitting it um, to mm. Vimeo sending it to lots of websites like it's nice that um, and if you're lucky they write about it so yeah I think it's it's not that important to be honest anymore to um, you know keep it in secret mm. for not showing it or not uploading yeah, it to the internet for one or two years you know and then you're like okay and then you're doing it after a year and you're like oh my god this is like a year ago now this is like old I, I don't really want to you know I don't really want to upload it now because I've, I've finished this a year or two years ago yeah mm -hmm. yeah sure there are pros and, and contrast for the episodes of it my personal choice is that since 2008 or 10 rather I am just uploading and I don't care really because mm. I think it's nice and some some YouTube and Vimeo, so if it reaches people, so, and, you know, they, they, I, this is how I got a lot of uh, good connections and friends also, because people found it on the Vimeo, something that, like, the animation, and I really had, like, very, very good projects after, some collaborations, or even commissions, you know, because people found it. So yeah. something I could never reach with the festivals, yeah. and for me, it works, and that, but of course, I understand that they, they want, like, festivals want to have it innocent, and just the first to say that, okay, it's mm -hmm. us who show it to you so it's like kind of it rises their value what they think but that's their problem not mine this this is but, uh, this was this was one of the a little bit positive aspects of this whole pandemic you know that festivals totally. had had to become hybrid and i remember you know like when when all this started and i was uh you know, showing some works to some students of, of mine. And then I was, you know, like complaining, ah, now I cannot go there, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then some of the students said, hey, you know, they see totally different, you know, mm -hmm. because they now finally have the chance to see films from Annecy, for example, you know, which is the biggest European animated film festival, you know, like, and I think the... Um, the accreditation was something like 10 or 15 euros, which was yeah. is also affordable for, yeah. for students. So, mm -hmm. you know, they were really happy about the fact that these festivals were getting at least hybrid. I mean, mm. yeah, at the beginning, not, not even hybrid, but just digital. And, you know, they were just happy about it. And uh, because it was getting a little bit more away of this exclusive... Mm -hmm. thing thing yeah 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 it got a lot more accessible which yeah was good on the other hand i mm. i i hate it you know to not i hated it but you know I'm, I'm just not the right person to to sit in front of my laptop and 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 watch animated short films which i was used to see in a cinema you know of course it's something totally different but at the end but this is actually but at the end, if the choice is no films at all or seeing them on the internet, of course, the internet is so much better than not mm. seeing them at all. Yeah. Mm. That, that's sure. I mean, you can take it as a preview, you know, it's just like, oh, on the other hand, you can organize yourself a, a beamer in the room, you know, the white wall and then screen it on the, or beam it on the white wall and watch it like that. And also, but I mean, I think that it, that's the festival should understand that they actually just by having films on the internet, they, the festivals, they don't lose anything because of this, you know, the the, the size of the screen, the, the quality of the sound system, and the fact that people, you know, it's just it's a social procedure that people are coming to the movie theater, you know, they put their perfume and, you know, makeup <laughs> on. It's just like, it's a different thing, you know, they, they behave differently, and they, they their body behaves, like, socially different. And it's, it's not one or another. It's They can coexist easily, and they do coexist. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. I think... And I think it, it it's I don't see any threat in the you know, for the festivals and these existing sure. you know ubiquitous Vimeo uh, on the YouTube and whatever else. On the other hand, you, we all know that also the social networks are coming more and more and more with some kind of this or that censorship. You are not supposed to show this and that and that. So then 
it can also be very, very helpful in a way for the festivals that they can say, okay, you cannot put it on the YouTube anymore because of that and that. You're welcome to the festivals, you know. So I think it's a very, it's ever changing situation. And so mm. it's never in the same place where it was yesterday, you know, so it, it keeps changing. But for example, my take on that, so it like, it pushes me, it, it moved me, you know, it, as a curator, you know, to look for the areas which are impossible on the internet on the youtube so for example like i'm, I'm like in parallel i was always doing the, the multi-channel you know the sound gallery the octophonic sounds and stuff but in 2018 i started making the loudspeakers orchestra festivals and that's definitely something you can never get in any kind of <laughs> uh internet because it's just first of all it's a it's stereo and b i mean usually how do we listen to the music in the internet it's just like you know mm-hmm laptop speakers so really not at all about the 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 the, the depth and the the colorness you know the colorfulness and the whatever of the, the multi-channel and really not at all about multi-channel so there is a big room for for festivals i think and i i, I yeah. see a big a lot a huge perspective also from that kind of su- sound and the immersive like point of view like the full dome stuff you know for the for the video for example there's still a lot for 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 the for the festivals to to do you mm-hmm. know and of course maybe internet takes some like kind of uh takes something over but but there's still gives even more actually mm. for for the for the life yeah that's the way i see it so but um <clears throat> i uh Rania, i wanted to because we kind of you know you don't want to talk about your own, but I still want to ask you about okay, the, what the, this future lab? I, I, I think everybody would be interested, and in, it's connected to arts electronic. Could you tell us a little bit uh, what was it, and if it's still there, you know, and what's what's the? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I'm I'm not the. I don't totally. I I cannot say something very solid about the about the current future lab because you know I I was there something like. 10 years ago or so but at the end it was a, it, it, it is and it still yeah it was and still is a gathering of creative people who come from different fields you know like uh, people like me who are rather on the visual side on the graphic side and the, on the audio visual side whatever but there's also programmers there who do such a you know who create so brilliant things in combination with other researchers and artists, etc. So I think mm-hmm. it was always quite nice that there was an, you know, like yeah, it, at the end, it was also about collaboration because most of the projects that were happening and are happening about, uh, you know, like not one person can do this. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it had to be collaboration because I'm not good in coding, you know, like, and if you do some sort of, installation or whatever it, it can be quite helpful if you have somebody who is who's good in coding etc cetera, etc cetera. so and then it was always quite quite joyful to to work there you know and it, 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 the the thing behind it is sort of research and of course very technologic but you know of course mm-hmm. this is also interesting and this also interested me uh, uh yeah so um, I'm I'm doing hard now to say something about the current future lab, you know. But I think they were going on this path, you know, like trying to see what is happening. For example, in in technology and how can we include this into our media art projects? Nice. And basically, it was something like 20, 30, 40, 50 people working for installations, working for this festival, which is happening in September. And so on and so mm-hmm. on. So I learned a lot there. Do you have some yeah. archives? That, that, do you have some uh, kind of archives? You know, maybe physical or, or internet where people could could see what you were doing there. In, what uh, what I was doing there? I'm not. I'm no, not no, sure. The archives. Yeah, archives. I I'm, say. I, I yeah. cannot. I cannot say now. I mean, basically, they're creating so many projects. I don't know if they have a specific archive where you can see. Mm everything but you know I, I, you know, you have to do some future uh, you know like some internet research about Ars Electronica uh, in, in general because it's yeah it is a museum it is a festival it is a free 
if yeah and and yeah i was doing i, I needed some years to understand the whole system <laughs> myself um but but anyway of course you can find a lot i mean what i know in the last years for example they were quite interested in drone with you know like not uh, drone sounds but those drones flying around and you know visualizing with those drones sort of 3d objects yeah. in 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 the sky and stuff like that so they were quite successful with this and i think this was one of their uh um mm -hmm. was, this was especially this is one of the main projects in some of the last years more i can't say yeah, no. i me yeah, personally I, me personally i was always like balancing in between working for them rather on the technologic technologic side but yeah like the flipbook festival on the other side trying to do something different that is maybe not technological. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Reni, how does it work you need to apply to model for? I mean, the funny thing in my, you know, in my case, it just happens. Uh, okay. I mean, basically it's a job, you know, like it's, it's not some, of course there's researchers there, but it's a laboratory where people work and who also do industry work, etc. In my case, it just happened. Back then, I was in Berlin. It seemed to me like, I don't know if I have the chance to stay in Berlin concerning money. And then it just happened. I was in a in a in a in a um, opening of a, of a gallery, and suddenly there was this one person, a future lab there, and he asked me, "Hey, you want to come to our place and maybe show some of your work?" And somehow it happened. You know, like sometimes, sometimes things happen. Sometimes they don't. In that case, it was like a, a total uh, incident mm -hmm. that I didn't know how to get money. Suddenly, there was the chance. I mean, of course, it was a bit weird at the beginning to move from Berlin to Linz. But you know, I really like Linz. It's it's a nice, uh -huh. uh, nice experimental place with a nice university. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Necessity is the mother of inventions, we know. But um, uh, Katrin, I wanted to ask you the, actually the same question about your program, about flattening the curve. So do you, do you have, I mean, you, you made a festival, you, you collected, you said like hundreds of works. So is it available somewhere or do you show it in the, in the festival? What happens? Yes, I mean, some festivals um, uh, selected the film. So it's it's a series of free films. So we ended up making free films. And it's it's available mm -hmm. on you. Yeah, so yeah, you can watch it. Yeah, I think we, we, we can also like add these links that we mentioned now after that in the comments <laughs> to this uh, talk because there's it's an information that is more or less obvious for you guys, but not probably for people who... Yeah. Just yeah, no, no. To learn about, get to it's a series of films. We were planning on making one film, but because it was, we said, you know, we didn't. I mean, we created the free films, and we had to create it in the end. And uh, we mm -hmm. had different topics um, for each mm -hmm. film, like recurring themes and topics for each film. So it is, it is a curated piece, but it's, you know, uh, yeah, three films in total, and consisting of, I think. Yeah, over 120 different artists took part in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you Which you gave them you you, you gave them, Katrin, you, you gave them specific guidelines, I guess, or you told them, hey, it should not be longer than yes. I don't know, 15 seconds or so and or, or 10 seconds and, and yeah, it was basically a fun project and we didn't really expect people to really submit films. So we didn't really have rules. We, did, we said we're going to, you know, select everything because we also wanted to show diversity because the, 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 the good thing and, and the thing we really loved about it is that, you know, really well-established animators submitted their clips, but also students, you know, who haven't really done that much animation. So it really shows <clears throat> the diversity. And we gave them a color scheme. We gave, you know, we said that, um, you know, it shouldn't be longer than 10 seconds. Um, and you should, you know, visualize and show something that, um, something you've experienced, something positive you, ex you have experienced, you know, during that, that pandemic. Yeah. So these were mm -hmm. the guides. And then we created it into three films. We worked with a composer, so it was yeah, completely collaborative. Um, and the music and sound really helped 
to make it work as a mm. film because it is mm -hmm. so different. and and we we didn't think it would work but somehow yeah it works as a film because um the way we edited it and because of um people it was so diverse but also people focused on funnily on 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 really similar themes and topics oftentimes so yeah, <clears throat> yeah. okay well i, I mean uh, thanks for this talk i mean i think we, we gave a really uh, great <laughs> overview right at least you know for hour and a little bit more than one hour and also presented and it was you know good communication i really appreciate and i really wish we would continue i just want to you know maybe for the last part of the talk i would i would love to ask you about the about your life and about your plans, what are the current projects or you know wishes or something you're working on right now, or probably resting and hoping to work in a when the vacation is over, you know whatever. <laughs> so, from from my side, currently I tr still try to enjoy the sun as long as it is there. But anyway, no, that's that's going to happen a lot in. Uh, Currently, no film or no animated film, but rather we have we are lucky to have some funding with our collective, which on the one hand goes into augmented reality, a, a project that um, I can, unfortunately I cannot talk too much about it, but you know it 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 is it it should be yeah somewhere between augmented reality but also analog aspects in there. Uh, you know, like um, it should be somehow collaborative, which is not so easy with augmented reality because you know, like uh, if, if it's if if it's one device, one person of maybe four or five standing around is looking into it. If it's more devices, it's getting complicated concerning uh, programming, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's many there's many uh, aspects that we have to think about now, and 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 currently we are. We are collaborating with a company in Vienna, which is also friends of us, which are called Causa Creations, which are also cr trying to create uh, new technology things that, ha that have a meaning, you know, like that's why they call themselves like Causa, you know, trying to create projects with a cause or with a, that makes sense and et cetera, et cetera. So this is mm, our current thing. And, you know, that's how it goes on and on somehow. You apply for something, sometimes you get a funding, then you create. And, and for me, it's really nice to be uh, sometimes working on own experimental films, but also sometimes collaborating with other people on films that necessarily are not animation at first, but somehow at second as well. So of course there will be animation in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was promising about you. Yeah, that yeah. sounds exciting. <laughs> so, let's see you know like of course budgets are not that so we have to be clever to do something that is possible with our resources uh -huh. mm. yeah. <laughs> so Kathleen yeah. how about you is there still <laughs> yeah. some sun in is there still some sun in London or it already was wind <laughs> old and it's always very windy in London but <laughs> it's very sunny and I've I've actually have family visiting from Austria. Oh. So my, my two nephews are here. They are like nine and twelve years, first time <laughs> on plane. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. No, it's it's sunny. Yeah, it's great. Good work. So no work right now. <laughs> Not today. I mean, I know today. I'm I am I'm I'm working on 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 something at the moment. Um, it's it's quite a long project. It's a. I can't really say too much about it, but it's an animated uh, documentary about, um, I'm not directing it. It's directed by uh, Megan Horvath. She's a, actually she comes, she's a live action director. And, but I'm on the, I'm, I'm working on the storyboards and on the animatic, I'm on the character designs and also I'm animating. And it's a, yeah, as I said, animated documentary about Eva Schloss, Eva Schloss is an Austrian Holocaust survivor. She's Anne Frank's stepsister. So, and she is still, she, is, she, lives, she lives in London, but she was born in the UK, but she moved to, uh, not born, she was born in Vienna, but she moved to the UK in, in the 1950s. And her brother Heinz and her father 
um, sadly didn't survive the Holocaust. They both died um, in Auschwitz. And her brother Heinz was a very gifted artist. Um, he was like writing a lot of poems and paintings. So what she's trying to do now is she's trying to make sure that his legacy is kept is kept alive. And so it's we yeah, like the paintings. He did a lot of paintings, so we're gonna animate the paintings. So it's it's a very it's a very long project, and we're hoping to finish it next year somehow because it's quite long. It's 40 minutes or 35 minutes long at the moment. Um, and I'm, yeah, then I'm also working on something more personal. And we have our own animation studio as well with, with my um, friend and creative partner, Emily Down, called Studio Desk. And we're working on quite a big, it's, it's yeah, we're working uh, a lot of time on, on commercial projects. So I'm constantly going between working on commercial briefs and, you know, more personal projects as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, cool. so good luck. Well, I mean, it also <laughs> sounds like a lot of good to do for the future. Nice plan. So all the best for that. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for, for the conversation, guys. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, thanks Absolutely. so much for, for inviting me. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it's a pleasure. And um, yeah, I, I think it's it's a beginning. I mean, you've been showing in the media studio, and uh, now we have a talk. And then I think it's a beginning of probably our connection, your connection to the. Uh, St. Petersburg and to, to, to our laboratory, so probably we can think something for the future. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, also, yeah, great. And uh, yeah, let's, let's think it over. And uh, thanks to uh, Austrian Cultural Forum for supporting us in this Arts Electronica screenings and for these conversations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. so see you somewhere. Yes. Vienna, see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Ciao. Bye bye.